Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to a talk about OpenMS and Grafana. Um, Taurus mentioned it in the keynote, and I would like to give you a short introduction how to use uh, Grafana with OpenMS and what is required and what kind of possibilities you have. Uh, who of you knows Grafana already? Three guys, okay. You played already for you played already with um, Grafana and other network monitoring tools or uh, time series databases, or uh, just we, we to use it okay. So uh, the main uh, reason was uh, the integration with OpenMS was a driver to look at it. Okay. Um, first of all short um, intro what Grafana is. Basically, it's kind of a performance dashboard for, perf uh, dashboard for uh, performance metrics. You can create your own uh, dashboards and publish them through a web application. And it has access to several time series databases which are available right now. Um, as you may have noticed, in the last few years, um, all this um, time series database um, development um, moved a little bit away from RD tool, from a really file-centric and uh, mon monolithic um, solution to more no SQL scalable kind of uh, time series storage technology. So, and we have uh, InfluxDB, OpenDSDB, and KairosDB, which you can basically directly address with Grafana. So you install one of these time series data stores and you can install Grafana and then you can use uh, Grafana to visualize uh, time series data based on that um, technologies. Uh, on the other hand, we have OpenMS, which is exactly the machine which collects all these metrics and we can store um, these uh, collected metrics in also different um, Time series databases like um, JRobin, RD tool, and now Newts with uh, 17. So, um, and the idea was uh, why not um, having um, a generic API, and that is the key uh, for the OpenMS platform, providing a measurement API which is not dependent on the technology which is behind uh, the time series data. Um, and now it would be really cool to have uh, integration with Grafana, so it would be uh, really nice to have a possibility to use also this dashboard um, technology for measurements collected from OpenMS. And it's also one of the main reasons we have now the measurements API to allow such kind of thing. Um, the measurement API completely abstracts uh, from the OpenMS point of view the, the technology which is used as a time series data. So if you have uh, OpenMS 16 running, you can directly use Grafana. It doesn't matter if you use JRobin or DTool or Nudes. It, it, it's really not um, an issue. And on Grafana, we have uh, built a plugin which uh, provides exactly the access to the REST API uh, through OpenMS. Um, from the OpenMS perspective, this kind of technologies like JRobin, RD tool, Newts is like the Red Shirts technology. That is something you may know from Star Trek. The guys who have Red Shirts, they can probably die. And um, JRobin, RD tool, and Newts are kind of these technologies, and we want to have a generic uh, measurement API which is um, always the same. It doesn't matter which kind of um, time series data store you use. Maybe in three or four or five years, there are better ones or different ones, so we would be able to adjust that to follow more um, the current technology. That is basically the groundwork to make that happen. What do you need um, to make, uh, to install it or to, to use it in your production? You need basically OpenMS uh, 16 plus, uh, any, any version behind OpenMS 16 has the measurement API. So uh, provides the, the data over REST. Um, you have to enable core support, which is uh, necessary because we have REST calls from a different web application. Um, so you have this kind of cross-origin uh, stuff you have to deal with the web application. 
you need uh, currently Grafana 2.13, that's the current version of Grafana. And you have to install the OpenMS Grafana data source plugin into Grafana itself. So that's basically everything you need to make that happen. Um, core support is pretty easy. It's just you have to uncomment in the web XML of the OpenMS web application. There is this um, little block you can find which is uh, commented. You just remove the comments, restart the web application, and then you are done uh, and you are able to uh, query the REST API from a different origin native from the uh, Grafana application. Installing Grafana is also not really complicated. They have Debian packages. You just install it um, as you like for your distribution or for your application, uh, for your uh, operating system you have running. So it's not really complicated. And the Grafana OpenMS plugin is in our uh, YAM and Debian repository, so you can use YAM or apt-get install Grafana OpenMS plugin and then you restart Grafana after you installed it and then it's available. So it's also not really a complicated issue. Um, to, um, if you want to uh, change the source code of the Grafana OpenMS plugin, it's in uh, our GitHub repository, uh, GitHub OpenMS slash Grafana, that is uh, where we uh, build this plugin. So that's also available in the GitHub repository. So basically, um, any questions so far? Yes? Uh, please again? Um, Grafana is uh, written in Go. Um, I don't have seen a really large environment if you have a lot of customers accessing it, but you can install it on separate machines. So, um, and you have the possibility to use different backends. You can um, create different um, dashboards for the users and even the user accounts itself. Uh, you have uh, different uh, technologies to store this data. So you start with a simple file. If you just install Grafana, then it's file-based. You can also uh, pro um, persist this data in SQL databases or any kind of other database. So there is a possibility to scale out Grafana itself. Um, we just use the REST API, so you can build that infrastructure completely separate. So that is basically a completely different application. Um, where find you the documentation for it? Because it's a kind of a integration part uh, you find in the wiki. That is where everything is uh, completely explained how to follow exactly this installation process. So it's just written like uh, one big page, just do this, do this, and then you're basically done. And we introduced in OpenMS 17 also a little feature uh, which was uh, created also by um, a guy here from the university which uses um, the REST API to query the dashboards which are available in Grafana. So you have access to dashboards um, directly from the web UI. So you click on this uh, link and then you get directly to the dashboard in Grafana. So it's pretty neat. So it uses also the REST API from, from Grafana. Um, I would like to show you now something what you can do with it and I, I think that the best thing is uh, we do something in the a, in a live system. Um, this is the documentation for it, uh, for the, the dashboard, for the graph box here. So if you go to the OpenMS uh, development um, documentation, because it's already merged to develop, so you find also uh, the documentation for it to make that available. Okay, so we go to a system. Where is it? We'll start here. Um, can you see that? Maybe make this one. Uh, if you log in, you have basically um, two, um, two screens. 
Um, one, one column is um, start dashboard, so you can make favorite dashboards, which are in, in this side. And on the other one, you have uh, a list with all available dashboards. And um, we have, um, I created just a few of them, and just to, to give you an idea what is possible and maybe to give you some, some insights. Um, for example, we have a Jenkins build system, which is ciopenms.eu, which we have running for just little side projects or um, just little things we want to, um, we developed in the community or something. So it's just a little a Jenkins build system. And what you basically have, um, we created a dashboard. So we have maybe three nodes, and we have a dashboard created for um, the load average, that we can see the load average for each node. What you can do is you can s select um, just one node. So you have a um, single select kind of thing, which is quite nice. And you can also have uh, multiple select. So you just see two, two of them. And you can easily compare that stuff. That's pretty interesting. And which is also interesting if you are interested in what happens in this area then you just zoom into this area and all the other graphs around go to the same time frame. So it makes it really handy to see different performance metrics in a, in a certain time frame, right? Any questions? Okay. Um, how they are built, basically. Um, we can just create a new dashboard, for example. And um, that looks a little bit confusing, but you have only this green little thing on top. So what they do, they have basically, they divide it in rows. The dashboard is um, divided in rows. So this is one row. If I click here to another row, then you see here another green little thing. So you can build basically multiple rows. And in each row, I need this one, you can add panels, and panels can be graphs, single statistics, uh, just plain text, or a list of other dashboards. So we just add a graph, and um, the default one is just spans over the whole page. If I say I want to have another graph, and I say hit another one, and you can do that over and over again. And you can also say, okay, I want this one here in the, in the second one, then you can move them around and you can arrange your dashboard pretty easily. Um, when you go to edit, then you see all the possibilities you have to edit this, um, this graph. And when you go to uh, the metrics, that is the important one, then you see this this eye says, um, is this metric visible? And here, if you click on the node, then you see basically all open mess nodes. And you can pick one, like use the mirror server, for example. Uh, and then you can go to resources, and then you see basically the same thing like you see on the node, level, on the node page when you go to the resource graphs. So it's basically the same thing. And you can just select, uh, I want to have a node level performance data. And then I would like to, and then you see all the, uh, the uh, tracks which are collected from OpenMS. And then we say we pick load average five minutes, for example. And then immediately he grabs all the data from the REST API and draws it in a graph. The problem you have with the load average if you collect them from SNMP, they are multiplied by 100. So you have a load from 115 instead of 1.15. So you have to calculate them. So that's also something you can do in uh, Grafana. You can go to um, create a different query. You don't use an attribute instead. You say, I want to have an expression. And with the expression, you can say, uh, I want to have the load average uh, divided by, f um, 500, uh, by 100. 
and you can uh, give them also a name load average and then you can see he added another track and it's divided and uh, you can use this eye here and remove this line from the view. So you have just a calculated value in the graph. Um, interesting or tricky part is the labels. So if you calculate um, values, um, he uses the serious label. If you don't uh, use it, it's exactly the description here in the legend. It has to be unique. So if I label this uh, calculated track exactly in the same name like uh, this one, it, it will not work. So you have to make sure you use different labels so um, the graphing API can really distinct the two um, different calculated time series data. Um, what also possible is you have uh, uh, possibilities to um, use the uh, how to use the time units. So there are a lot of uh, different uh, possibilities for um, to giving, give, a, give a nice meaning to the, to the data, like uh, seconds, microseconds, if you have durations, or even for data or data rates, uh, also energy, weather, whatever. There's a lot of stuff already in there. So you have a you have a nice um, legend uh, with the right units. Another thing is um, you can also switch to a log based, uh, logarithmic based um, axis, which could be also interesting if you have um, data which is pretty close by or you have um, um, traffic is sometimes uh, 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 something you can use it for. So that is also something you can use and there's also a possibility to add uh, visual threshold lines. So if you want to have a threshold by uh, 0.3, then you have basically an area which explains uh, the threshold. You can make another one with 0.5. I have a second area, right? It's that's manual kind of thing could be helpful, but um, it, is, it is manual. You have to type it in manually. It's not something you can query automatically like. It would be nice to have the OpenMath real sh thresholds in it, but um, this is something which, which doesn't work right now. Uh, you can also move it to a line mode, and you have just, just uh, lines instead of areas. Um, to visualize the data from uh, the, the real um, min, max, average data, you can add a table. Um, and if you click here, min, max, average, and you see um, on the right, right hand side, you see um, the values. And they are also, yeah, you have also a total if you want. And you can move that table also to the right side if you if you like that better. So that's also doable. And uh, if you have uh, really long um, float values, you can also limit them to just maybe one decimal. So it is a little bit bit nicer. Um, display settings. There are also a few options. The default one uh, is just lines. So you, you have just a, a line graph here. Uh, you can also say, I want to have bars with points, and you can play around with all that stuff. So you can make fancy things. Which, what interesting is, um, this, um, this button on the below here, it's a, uh, you have a, um, serious specific parameters you can set. So you can have a regular expression on your um, graph, and then you say you can have uh, different uh, properties assigned to a graph if such a um, regular expression matches. Um, I can show you something 
in a prepared graph, then it makes it a little bit easier, I think. Uh, for example, you want to go to bandwidth. And um, so <coughs> what you know in OpenMS, we have this, uh, this bandwidth graph where you have um, the, the incoming bandwidth is positive and the outgoing bandwidth is negative. And if you have multiple servers and you want to stack them, then it's a little bit tricky because you want to stack the just the positive incoming metrics and you want to have the um, outgoing negative uh, metrics also stacked. So you need basically two stacks. And that is something which you can do exactly with this, uh, with this specific option. You can say, um, you can create, um, you can assign a metric to a stack A, then you stack only the positive ones and then you create another one with stack B where you only stack the negative ones and then you get a a nice um, stacked bandwidth graph about for multiple servers and interfaces. So basically, you just uh, assign them uh, one to A, maybe incoming, then you add another one. This server, stack them also. So then just a is stacked and then you make the same thing for the outgoing traffic and then you create a second stack which is then stack B. And this will give you the possibility to deal with several metrics in, in different ways. Um, the rendering of the graph is um, done by plot, uh, Flot. It's a um, JavaScript framework. Uh, you can also use uh, a graphite PNG. If you uh, switch it over there, then it is generated as a PNG. So it makes it maybe a little bit easier to integrate with your own applications if you want. Um, Default time range, it's also, um, I think, pretty obvious. It's just the default time range if you go to the graph. Okay. Um, what probably is also a really interesting um, option if we just go, for example, to a more complex report like this one. We did it, uh, this report for um, uh, a research project which was used to measure power consumption in a cloud environment. And you want to publish this data or you want to make this data someone available who has not access to Grafana itself. What you can basically do, there is a share button in the top. And you can say, what is the current time range? What, is the, uh, what kind of uh, variable, variables you want to give in the report like the from and to date and also um, the theme which you want to use, but it's not a big, big deal. Um, you can make local snapshots or you can publish the data, the dashboard data to uh, a cloud server which is running. And if you say it expires in one hour, then it publishes the data to uh, a cloud service and makes uh, this URL, if I go to this URL, then I see exactly this data from this dashboard and I can use it exactly in the same way. It's just a snapshot data and somebody can use it for diagnose things, right? So he, do he doesn't need any access to the Grafana application itself. And I'm quite sure there are also possibilities to use that in a REST way to Grafana. It's maybe a in, in really interesting uh, use case or can, can be helpful if you want to diagnose something with your customer. You want to let him go to your system. You just send him a link to a mail. Just this was the problem and he can see it by himself. It's just a snapshot data. Okay. Um, 
you probably want to know the most important question because I haven't uh, <laughs> mentioned it yet. How do we connect Grafana to OpenMS, right? Basically, that is what is here in data sources. Data sources is exactly this plugin you have to configure. So what you say here, um, one, uh, we can go to edit here. That is uh, the thing you have to, uh, that's a name for the data source. This is the type, so that's uh, everything which is uh, available in Grafana and the OpenMS one is exactly this Grafana plugin we have to install to make that possible. And we have also um, username, credentials, we have basic authentication and you just set it to proxy and then you're pr pretty much done. Interesting is you may see there are two OpenMSs by in, in my Grafana dashboard which makes it also re really interesting. You can mix and match multiple OpenMS data in this dashboard. So for example, the first one is running at uh, the university, the second one is my local OpenMS and I can use here for example in this, um, in this dashboard means this data uh, here is um, collected from a different OpenMS and I can mix and match this data. It doesn't really matter where the data comes from. You can use them in the graph and you can calculate different metrics uh, with each other. It's a really interesting use case. Okay. Um, what's coming in 17, they, uh, Jesse uh, extended the uh, uh, Grafana plug plugin a little bit. So it is also now possible to have a drop down field in the top. So you can create a dashboard for one specific node. And you can say, I would like to see the dashboard just for um, this node, for example, just for Booty in this case. And all the data is just filled in for uh, one node, you can say I want to uh, see both data in the graphs and he adds another one or um, yeah, just have all of three of them, so it's not a big deal. Um, how is that possible? Basically you have a kind of a Grafana templating and what you do is you create a variable which is called just a node in this case. And um, here is the possibility to allow multi-select, that you can have multiple selections. And here you have an array of nodes you want to provide or you want to um, have in the selection for, for the dashboard. And in the graph, you just have um, a variable here in the, in the node field. So it, it just replaces, it's really a, a replace in the, in the expression from the selection. The next step would be um, having a category filter and using a REST call to OpenMS and say, give me all nodes from category XYZ, surveillance category or something, and then you don't have to manually type them in as a, as, um, a defined array. That would be the, the next step. Okay, um, so far I think everything um, I know about <laughs> Grafana. Um, um, do you have any questions, any ideas? Yes? Um, the question was, uh, are there any chances to get uh, thresholds um, from OpenMS into Grafana? Uh, yes, there are, because they are events. And as you um, may, I haven't noticed that, because there's a field called annotations. And maybe there's a chance to have um, annotated graphs. So you can say, uh, on this point in time, a threshold was breached. Maybe that's also as, um, a way to um, draw in the thresholding line 
maybe. We haven't figured it out yet. It's really just, but it's, I think, basically, um, we have access to thresholds in OpenMS, so we should maybe have to expose it through REST and all that kind of things, but it basically, it should be doable, but uh, currently, it's not on the, on the plan right now. Yes? Um, is it, I'm not too sure about um, Fana, so is it possible to get um, a kind of uh, access control <coughs> level on it, the way you would with Cacti, so that anyone logging in can see a subset of um, graphs? Yeah. Uh, the question was if there's any access control list uh, available uh, for Grafana. It's a user base. So you, have, uh, you have users in, in Grafana, and they have different possibilities or roles. And you have organizations, and then th there you can group dashboards based on, on an organization. So you have a, a, st a structure where you can assign um, people to organizations and then to um, assigning dashboards to these organizations. That's, that's possible. The default setting is, and that's uh, important, uh, everybody can register. If you just install Grafana, everyone can register an account and just create his, start creating his dashboards. So you have to configure Grafana to make it a private setup, and uh, yeah, that is. And uh, <coughs> another thing in Cacti, which is quite easy to do, yeah. is you can apply templates uh, for hosts, for um, interfaces, yes. uh, etc. Uh, so it's quite easy to set up um, per interface the type of graph that you want. Right. Uh, is it possible in this? To um, in, in, in this case, um, every dashboard you create here, you have as, um, it's basically defined as JSON. So you can import and export them. And um, as I mentioned, if you use this kind of um, uh, uh, templating with uh, annotations, then you can basically build uh, a Linux-based uh, dashboard, a Windows-based dashboard, or kind of, um, you have to find, define a, a set of metrics which has similar k KPIs. That's that's the, the key in this in this in this uh, specific type of problem when you have performance dashboard uh, templates because uh, Windows Box doesn't have any idea about load, right? So you won't see anything uh, in a load graph when you select a Windows Box or something. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. I think um, if you want to uh, want to know more, then I think lunch is a good good idea. Thank you.